our story so far. Butch Trevor and I have come to Simmons Yacht Rock with the RSPB's bird bus to help with the Peregrine Falcon project. Watching the birds reminded us of the time we first saw a peregrine, when we were kids spending a holiday on the Regent's Canal. Hey, look! One day we saw a beautiful bird. Then we saw a man called Badger and a woman dressed in black trying to catch the bird. Later we saw them again. They got the bird in a basket. The woman told us it was a parakeet. By the time we got back to Sharon's boat, we were bursting to tell her all about the bird. You're late. Where's all the fish? Too many for you to carry. Sorry, Sharon, we... You what? Well, you see, first we saw a parakeet. But I don't think it was a parakeet. And then we met this man and woman who told us it was a parakeet. But Butch says it was a duck. But it went kick, kick, kick. Not quite, quite, quite. And, well, anyway, what does a parakeet look like? Well, it's a bit like a parrot, I think. I'll look it up in my bird book. Like a parrot. But parrots are all bright colours, aren't they? And this bird was a sort of grey-brown. There you are. Sharon showed us a picture of a parakeet. It wasn't a bit like the bird in the basket. It was bright green. So it wasn't a parakeet. What was it then? Wait a minute. Its beak was hooked like that parakeet's. So it could be a rare dark brown sort of parakeet. Some people believe anything. Now, come on, kids, stop chattering. Just tell me slowly. One at a time, what happened? Well, well we're just, just out there. there. Oh, on second thoughts, I think you'll drive me mad. Now, come on, we must take my water cans down to the craft shop. You can tell me about that strange bird later. One at a time. Now, come on, let's get moving. We took the boat on up the canal. On the way up, we went into a lock. This is how the canal lock worked. First, you had to shut the lock gates. The narrowboat was now inside the lock, and the water level was low. On the other side of the lock, the water level was high, so we had to let some of that water into the lock. The lock filled up. As the water level went up, the boat went up. After a few minutes, the lock was full. Open the gate! When the lock was full, we opened the lock gates. Rosie went out of the lock on the higher level. Canal locks are a bit like stairs for boats. On the other side of the lock, we went past some houses whose back gardens ran down to the canal. Hey, look, Sharon, slow down, it's them! What do you mean? Them! What? We all saw the man called Badger and the woman dressed in black. They were arguing. Don't give me any more excuses! You're nothing but a cheap, small-time crook! And the sooner I get rid of you, the better! There! What 
do you think of that? Crook, she called him. Oh, people say that without really meaning it. She meant it all right. Definitely. But Sharon didn't take it very seriously. She was in a hurry to get to the craft shop, so he went on up the canal. OK, Jackie, take the chimney down. Trevor, run to the front. Get ready for tying up. Sharon took Rosie into a dock near the craft shop. We moored there for the night. But we kept thinking about the two strangers. Who were they? Do you remember when the woman in black told us that the bird we saw was a parakeet and we looked it up? Yes, Sharon was right. Parakeets do belong to the parrot family. Hey, I think you belong to the parrot family. Oh, why? Because a parrot is a wordy birdie. <laughs> oh. Jackie, look up parrot in the bird book. Right. Index. P for parakeet, P for parrot, page 60. Oh, look, Trevor was right too. Parrots are brightly coloured birds. And what colour were the parakeets in Sharon's book? Oh, good. A parakeet perch all to myself. Oh, the label says so. Parakeet. <laughs> hey, it says parakeet here. That means one. Now we're two, so what's to be done? That's no problem. I've got extra S. Because without it, I'd be in a mess. Oh, extra S, yes. Mm. Oh, extra S, yes. Oh. <laughs> now, look what I've done. Extra S means more than one. Uh, make room for me, please. It says parakeets here. Now we're three. This won't do. What's it going to be? The label says parakeets. No need to fuss. One extra S will do for all of us. Oh, <laughs> good day. Call themselves parakeets? Those stupid birds have forgotten this. No, bird brain. You never <laughs> use apostrophe when you add extra S. Oh. Let's try out extra S on some more things. OK. One bean. With extra S, you get lots of beans. One P. With extra S, you get lots of peas. One chip. With extra S, you get lots of chips. Yes, folks, you get more. With extra S. Apostrophe? <laughs> Forget it. Look, a rook. One more bird for our list. Hey, look up rook in the bird book, Jackie. OK. Oh, more of Jay's acorns. Next, we'll look out for the sound you hear in look and rook and book. And crook, remember badger? Yes, Trevor, you've got it. Look and listen. Look out, look out, look out for oop. Look out for oop in your book. Look out, look out, look out for oop. No doubt with oop, it's good. Look out for oop in the wood. Look for a rook in the wood. To read, find a book. To fish, find a hook. Look out for good. Old O. Look out, look out, look out for O. Look out for O in your book. Look out, look out, look out for O. No doubt with O, it's good.
Now, let's read the words in the CH train. Cheap. Chocolate. For shattering children. Oh, where are my acorns? I left them. What's here. the matter, Jay? Have you lost something? I'm sure I left my acorns round here somewhere. I... It's a mystery, a, a complete mystery. No, it's not. You hid them behind the bird books. Ah! Mystery solved. Oh, mystery solved? Whoa! That's what Dr. Tipton's good at. Let's join him on the trail of a mystery word. If a word is a mystery, be a detective just like me. This word's a mystery. Look in front. The children. The children did something. And look behind. The children something rosy for the night. And the mystery word ends in E-D. Think now, what did they do to Rosie? Let's try this word. The children parked Rosie for the night. It ends in E-D, and it fits, but it doesn't quite make sense. Do you park a boat? No. Try again. See if there's a picture you can find. Aha! So they were doing something with ropes. Let's have another go. Split it up and spell it out. The mystery word begins with M. Maud. The children moored Rosie for the night? Does that make sense? Have a go and don't take fright. Ah, the children moored Rosie for the night, yes. So remember... If a word is a mystery, be a detective just like me. Have a go and don't take fright, just guess. Then check if you've got it right. Thank you, Dog Detective. Oh, oh, word watchers, we can all be reading detectives like him. And now for some more of our story, Wordy. Ooh. It's got Dog Detective's mystery word in it. The next morning at the craft shop, we helped Sharon unload and set out all the things she had to sell. But after lunch, we were still talking about the bird we'd seen. Yes, but why should they want the bird? What could they do with it? Perhaps they're starting a, a crooked bird farm. A bird farm? Yeah. They're breeding masses of special parakeets. Yes, but we don't know if it was a parakeet. All right, masses or whatever it is then. Then one day, they'll let them attack a train, say. A train carrying banknotes. And the birds will fly straight at the driver, you see. And then they'd have to stop the train and give up all the money. There. That's what I think. Oh, you've got a wonderful imagination, Butch. Would the birds be trying to carry off the notes in their beaks, Butch? Well, maybe. Or perhaps they'll have little money boxes tied to their legs, eh, Butch? Don't try to be funny, Trevor. Why don't you stop worrying about them or their birds? I thought you were planning to visit Mr Trim. Oh, no, not that old junk shop again. It's not an old junk shop. Mr Trim says it's an antique shop. <laughs> What's the difference, then? The difference, clever boy, is that an antique shop sells expensive furniture, really beautiful stuff, whereas a junk shop... Well, that just sells a lot of cheap old rubbish. Old rubbish? That's Mr Trim's all right. No, it isn't. He sells real antiques, not junk. Oh, yeah, 50 pence each. Anyway, he's a nice old man, and I like him and his shop. Yes. I've got some money to spend. We're going to Mr Trim's. OK, I give in. Ah, hello, my dear little sailor friends. What can I do for you? Come on. Bye. Bye. Mr. 
Jim had an old camera there last time. That's what I'm going to get. So it won't work. That's the moment. Hunger strikes. Time for refreshment. Oh, no, but it's not more sweet. Chocolate. While I went into the paper shop, Jackie and Trevor looked at the cards in the shop window. They spotted this card. Hey, who said Mr. Truman's only an old junk shop? Look at this. He's selling something for £500. What? Where? For sale. Small chest of drawers with contents, e.g. rare specimens. £500. £500 for a chest of drawers? I don't believe it. Butch, look. You see, I told you Mr Trim doesn't sell junk. Contents. That means what's inside. But you don't sell furniture with things in it, do you? Mr Trim does. What does EG mean? EG? Oh, EG spells egg. So the contents must be eggs. Don't be silly. E.G. means, for example. That's what I said. Example. <laughs> eggs. Did you say eggs? What kind of eggs? I was, I was only joking. Joking? What's this? Do you kids know anything about this card? Do you know this Mr. Trim? Well, uh, not really. Well, yes. Definitely not. Come on, let's go. But as we walked away towards Mr. Trim's, we saw the man coming out of the paper shop. And he was coming in our direction. We started to run. In the swirling sky, a bird can swoop and fly. There's a hunter in the sky, watch him swoop, see him spy. There's a hunter in the sky, see him stoop, the hunter in the sky.